Hello, I'm Beth Wagner, physical therapist. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to choose the best mobility assistive device for your specific needs. I'll be covering canes and walkers. Now, there are a couple main factors to consider when choosing an assistive device. First of all, how much support is needed and how will the device be used? Is this, is this for temporary or long-term use? Is this for short distance, medium distance, or long distance? in the home and or in the community? And what is the individual's baseline strength, endurance, coordination, and balance? Now I'll address each of these questions as I briefly review these devices. First, I'll cover the best use and the pros and cons of canes, and then we'll move on to walkers. Finally, I'll provide my recommendation for the best mobility assistive device for a few common conditions. Now, I've also created a number of more specific videos covering the proper fit and use of specific devices that I'm showing here today. To check out those videos, click the links in the description below. In this video, I'll show you three of the most common and useful types of canes, and then I'll show you a specialty cane that combines single point cane with a reacher. It's a very handy device. I'll briefly show you each of these canes and then I'll talk about canes as a group. Now, this is an offset cane, also called a single point cane. Now this is a single point cane or an offset cane with a quad tip. This tip is added onto the bottom of the cane to allow it to stand up on its own. Next, we have the narrow-based quad cane. This style cane has four points on the bottom. It provides more support than the single point cane with the quad tip because these four points are, create a much a wider base of support. And finally, the handy cane combines a straight cane with a reacher. With this device, if we pull up on the, on the grip here and engage the trigger, a reacher comes out the bottom. So this is a great tool to have handy around the house to pick things up and then put it back into the cane position and use it as a cane. Now canes as a group are best used when a medium amount of support is needed and the individual has fair to good strength, balance, coordination, and endurance. Now the pros of using a cane include that it's light and easy for home and community transport and storage. Using a cane is great for energy conservation compared to walking without an assistive device. Canes can be used for temporary recovery following an injury or surgery, or they can be used for long-term assistance. It's also easier to go up and down curbs and stairs using a cane compared to using crutches or a walker. And it's easier to walk through narrow spaces using a small assistive device like a cane. Also, in some cases, the cane can be switched from using it in the right hand to the left hand to relieve fatigue and discomfort in the palm and the wrist. The primary con of using a cane is that it requires at least partial weight bearing of both legs. Because it provides support only on one side, it won't work if one leg is completely non-functional. Examples of this situation include recovery from a severe stroke or from a severe leg injury, such as a bone fracture. The use of a cane requires more baseline strength, balance, coordination, and endurance compared to a walker. For more information on how to choose the best cane for you and how to use it properly, check out this video that I created that focuses entirely on canes. You can click the link in the corner above or click the link in the description below. Now moving on to walkers. Walkers are best used when a greater amount of support is needed and when baseline strength, balance, coordination, and endurance are poor. Now the pros of walkers include that they do provide a greater amount of support compared to crutches and canes. And they're better for energy conservation when used in the home and the community. And there are many accessories available for walkers, including different types of bags, trays, and even seats. These additional accessories help to carry items and complete household activities safely. 
and a walker can be used progressively as the condition improves with changes in weight bearing status, strength, balance, and endurance. Now the cons of walkers include that they require use of both arms and they are heavier and larger compared to canes and walkers. And they take up more space in the home and in the community. Sometimes it's more difficult to fold and fit a walker into a car. And because of the larger space, it can be more difficult to keep it handy without it becoming a trip hazard for other people around. Also, a walker can possibly be too large to fit through narrow doorways and to negotiate tight turns. I'll briefly show you two of the most common types of walkers. I go into greater detail on proper fit and use of walkers in an additional video focused entirely on walkers. Check the link in the description below to watch that video. The two main types of walkers are front-wheeled walker and a rollator. Now I have two versions of a front-wheeled walker here. You'll notice there are two wheels on the front which help it slide. And the tips on the back help to keep it in place so that it doesn't roll too much. It adds some friction. This walker is very similar to the first one with the addition of the ski glides on the back tips. This allows it to slide a bit easier than the tips. And finally, we have the rollator. This is also known as a four-wheeled walker. Notice the large wheels on the front and the back. This allows more mobility, allows it to roll. Because of the four wheels, it can roll much easier than the front-wheeled walker. Rollators come with brakes as an added safety feature because of the additional roll. Again, I provide a lot more information on the proper fit, use, and accessories of these various walkers in the video that I created specifically focused on walkers. Click the link in the description below to check out that video. Now I'll briefly mention my recommendations for a few common conditions. A cane can be a great tool for generalized weakness and imbalance. And a walker is a better choice for more severe cases when more support is needed. Often both devices are used. A cane is used in the home because it's easier to use in smaller spaces. And a walker is used in the community for more support and better energy conservation. Canes are a great choice for temporary or long-term use when coordination, strength, balance, and endurance are fair to good. Canes can be used for short or long distance, and they're a great choice when one arm has been affected by a condition, such as a stroke, because they only require use of one arm. And finally, the walker is the best choice for temporary or long-term use when the individual has poor to fair baseline strength, balance, coordination, and endurance, and the use of both arms. Walkers can be used for short or long distances and with partial or non-weight bearing status. Now I wanna briefly mention the option of borrowing a device versus purchasing a brand new device. Borrowing a device is a great option for saving money, but it's important to make sure that the device is in good working condition and that it is a proper fit. To check for excessive wear and tear, look at the tips on the bottom of the cane and check out both the tips and the wheels on walkers. Also look at all of the releases and the spots where the device folds to make sure that you're able to open and close it properly and that you're still able to adjust the height of the device. It's also important to use a device that is fit well for you. This includes both height and weight. Every device has a rating of the max weight limit most of the time, this rating is labeled right on the device. For example, there's usually a sticker on the side of walkers as well as along the shaft of the cane that includes the maximum weight. For standard devices, the weight limit is usually 300 to 350 pounds. Heavy duty or bariatric devices typically have a max weight limit of 500 pounds. When borrowing a device, be sure to check the label for the weight limit. And when purchasing a device, the max weight limit is always included in the listing. So double check that before clicking the purchase button. Now moving on to height. Most of these devices are adjustable for height. 
in my collection here. The one exception to that is the handy cane. This comes in sizes of small, medium, and large. And I believe that's because of this additional feature that turns the cane into a reacher. That's why it's not adjustable. Now the way that you adjust the height varies from device to device. Please check out my other videos, the links in the description below, to check out more specific instructions on how to adjust the height of these devices. All right, that wraps up this introductory video on how to choose the best mobility device for you. I hope you found this video helpful to help you do the things you love to do every single day. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up and, and consider subscribing to my channel. Please check out my other more specific videos covering information on proper fit and use of all of these devices. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I'm able.